yun, di ba? Sinabi din, na hindi ba yun yung recording in progress? <laughs> so, hi everyone. Uh, welcome sa ating uh, RCRF tonight. And ang uh, main na tanong natin is, is Calvinism biblical? So, what I'm gonna do, ito yung outline natin. I'm gonna go through a quick historical introduction of Calvinism. And then I'm gonna go through the five points comparison with uh, yung kung saan siya typically uh, hinahambing. And then afterwards, I'm gonna go through a run-through of all of them and get the textual basis. Pero bago yan, actually nasa slide 4 na tayo, I wanna, I wanna start off with this reality. You know what? Um, for all Christians, salvation is the common experience. Uh, what do I mean? If ikaw ay Christian and the primary thing you think about is the fact that Christianity has the Ten Commandments, Christianity has the Sermon on the Mount, Christianity has the Fruit of the Spirit, and ang tingin mo is that Christianity is a list of rules That's not Christianity. Kasi Christianity is primarily what Jesus did to save my soul and how God is glorified through the redemption of His people. And so, um, yung usapan ng salvation, ganito kahalaga yung usapan na yan. You know what? I don't know about you, pero if you're here, may relationship ka, um, typically pinag-uusapan niyo lang, eh, sino ba ang unang na-inlove? Paano? na in love or if you have parents di ba mga 50 60 years old na nalandi pa din pag pinag-usapan yung love story nila um and the reason why i bring that up is on the one hand no iba yung love story ng parents ng couples ng ng mga friends natin from salvation kasi sa salvation si God so may complete knowledge tayo we're here from our limited perspective trying to understand how things are tayo naman, in human relationships, both parties do not have complete access. And so, one person might have this story, the other person might have another story, although they're talking about the same event. Even then, may mga hindi fully understood or hindi full yung nakikita na perspective. And so, in that sense, magkaiba yung dalawang yon. But there is one common thread between the two experiences. Ano yon? When we talk about salvation, when we talk about um, these things, it shouldn't just be intellectual. It should be something exciting. It should be something that awakens affections in us. Kaya maganda yung sinabi ni Omar kanina sa prayer niya. Throughout this whole soteriology session, diba? from Calvinism, Arminianism, Molinism, I'm hoping you would be Calvinist. But if ever you don't, then to the very least, I'm hoping that you would fall in love with Jesus more. Uh, whichever strand you go into. Pero sana Calvinism. Now, I know we've been raising this term a lot, yung soteriology. But uh, essentially, what soteriology is, is really just the study of how we are saved. Ano ba yung mechanism? Kung paano pinili ni God kung sinong maliligtas? Paano ka niya niligtas? Paano ka mananatiling ligtas? Basically, soteriology is salvation studied. And so I really can't think of a way for soteriology to just be a head knowledge type of thing. It really has to come to a point where it's something near and dear to us. Now, a lot of people have argued about it passionately. In fact, uh, a lot of people have even picked fights about it. But just because uh, this important matter is something that has brought up uh, a lot of conversation doesn't mean it should be something that we divide over, that we break fellowship with. On the contrary, it should actually deepen yung fellowship na meron tayo. And so, um, I'm going to start off with the first point. I'm going to talk about the historical background of Calvinism. Now, heads up, um, well, this whole thing is called Calvinism, hindi siya nagsimula kay John Calvin. Um, you actually have the whole Reformation line and you have guys like Martin Luther writing about the bondage of the will. And essentially, dahil nasa bondage yung will natin, God is to be the one to free the will to, to, to choose Him. Unfortunately, well, actually, fortunately, um, bagamat Martin Luther was the one who sparked it, Um, eventually, there came another generation of theologians, and among that generation is John Calvin. So John Calvin is way younger than Martin Luther, um, but both of them are lawyers. And yet, John Calvin became the foremost reformer because of his writing on the institutes of the Christian religion. And on top of that, madami pang iba. But what set Calvin apart is the fact that he was a good systematician. What does that mean? Ibig sabihin, he wanted to systematize theology so that it would be easier to see which parts connect, how does one part relate to the whole, and so come to a more coherent view of, uh, of Christianity. Now, just to be clear, um, yung descendants ni Calvin, the ones who inherit it, are called Reformed. 
Um, so Presbyterians would be among them, like uh, si Brother Gerard Pelaez. He is actually uh, the descendant of Calvin. But us, I'm actually coming from uh, a non-denominational background. And yet, while I am not the inheritor of the full system of Calvinism, even I can still adhere to the soteriology, or at least how Calvinism has uh, traditionally seen salvation. Now, just to just to say this up front, no, um, the Presbyterians, the Reformed Baptists, well, they are um, in one sense the ones who inherited a big portion of the Reformation. So did the Lutherans. So did the Anglicans. So did the Episcopalians. And I'm gonna say this up front. So do the Arminians, and of course us. Um, who are uh, Protestants today, evangelicals. We are children of the Reformation. However, in the 1600s, sa Holland, um, while Calvinism was uh, being taught as a primary school of Reformation, there was this guy named Jacob Arminius. He was a student of Theodore Beza. Now, for those who don't know Theodore Beza, he's actually the successor of John Calvin. Um, and uh, he's credited to be the one who made Calvinism into an academic school of thought. So, Calvinism systematized, Beza uh, institutionalized, and Arminius was part of that institution. And uh, eventually, habang si Theodore Beza ay nagtuturo sa University of Leiden noong 1603, si Arminius, he gathered some other ministers and they drew up their creed in five articles. And they laid them before the state authorities noong 1610 and dun nagsimula yung tinatawag nating remonstrance. Basically, what they did was they had certain points of teaching that they wanted to reevaluate. And so after none, they, they signed it. 46 ministers of the Remonstrance signed that document. And an official Calvinistic response was issued from the Synod of Dort on November 13, 1618. And to May 9, 1619, na consider ngayon yung five articles. And um, the 46 ministers of the Remonstrance were answered by 84 members and 18 secular commissioners. And so the Synod wrote what has come to be known as the Canon of Dorts. At dito nang galing, yung tinatawag nating five points of Calvinism, which is the response to the five articles of the Remonstrance. And uh, this is the five points of Calvinism. Others have uh, different acronyms for it. I, I have one good theologian. Ang acronym na ginamit niya is BACON. I will not elucidate what BACON is, although it makes me hungry. But basically, tulip, covers total depravity, unconditional election, limited atonement, irresistible grace, perseverance of the saints. Depravity, ang tanong lang dyan is, gaano ba kasama ang tao? Ano ba yung kaya niyang gawin para naman ang palataya? Election. Uh, paano mo malalaman kung sino maliligtas? Is it something that God chose? Is it something that we chose? Is it is it my choice that ultimately saves me? Um, limited atonement, para kanino si Jesus na matay? Did he die for everyone or did he die for a select people? Um, ano yung nature ng grace? Ang grace ba po pwede kong hindi an? Or is grace something that when it touches the heart, it overcomes and overcomes to the full? Salvation. Do we persevere to the end? Are we once saved, always saved? Or are we once saved, always kabado, thinking na mawawala salvation mo? That is the whole conversation na kinover nung five articles. Now, a quick um, comparison, particularly because the Arminians from Jacob Arminius, uh, they, they kind of were the ones who inherited the remonstrance. Um, I'm, I'm going to show here a quick overview, a quick comparison of the two. But a heads up, um, as I go through the Arminian side, you will notice I talk about the classical Arminians and the modern Arminian. Why? Um, Arminianism has uh, classical Arminianism, of course, from the remonstrance, which is actually a bit more reformed than, than some neo-Calvinists today. Um, but, there's another line, the matatag natin Wesleyan Arminians and then come to the modern day Arminians who kind of deviated from the classical Arminians. And I think Omar's talk uh, would cover that a bit more. Pero, just to give you an overview, Calvinism and Arminianism both agree on total depravity, that man is corrupted by sin and unable to come to God on their own accord. Um, pero, recently, we have noticed that there are some Arminians who actually hold to partial depravity. Ibig sabihin yan, na yes, man is corrupted by sin, Pero, meron daw iniwan si God na ability for man to come back to Him and separate pa yon from prevenient grace. So there's that uh, minority view among Arminians. But of course, pagdating sa election, dyan na pumapasok yung unang difference. Um, for us, Calvinists, 
we believe that God elects individuals to salvation based on His will and not even based on our choice. Meaning, um, God did not choose us because He knew that we would choose Him. On the contrary, He chose us because He knew we wouldn't choose Him. And so, it is His choice that made our choice for Him. And now, sa Arminianism, there's conditional election, meaning that God elects individuals to salvation based on, and the yung condition, yung foreknowledge of who will believe in Christ unto salvation. Now, of course, isa pang messy na conversation is atonement. Of course, kakasabi ko lang kanina, na for us Calvinists, we believe that Jesus died only for the elect. But for the Arminian, Jesus died for all. And yet, okay, I, I want to make this clear, Arminianism is different from universalism. Bakit? The universalist will say, since Jesus died for all, therefore all are saved. The Arminian says, Jesus died for all, but you must put your faith in Christ in order to be saved. So some Calvinists have uh, falsely accused Arminians of being universalists. That is not so. Arminians and, Cal- and the universalists are two different groups. One are genuine brothers and sisters in Christ, and the other group, we hope that they are. Um, and then of course, pagtingin sa grace, we Calvinists, we believe that when grace comes a knocking in the heart of someone that God chose, you cannot fully and finally say no. You can say no at multiple points in your life, but when God chooses to overcome your resistance, He can and He will. Pero, sa Arminianism, grace is something that you are free to resist. Um, in fact, dito papasok yung idea of prevenient grace for Arminianism, that sinners drawn to Christ now have the God-given ability to choose salvation. It's something that you can choose and it's also something that you can now reject at the same time. Per prior, wala ka nung first option. Now there's two options for you. Now lastly, pagdating sa perseverance of the saints, I hold this and I hold this to be dear to my heart and I'm confident a lot of Arminians still hold it. I pray they do. Naniniwala ka, dapat, both groups, that perseverance of saints means that those elected by God, yung mga pinili ni Lord, will persevere in faith and will not permanently deny Christ or turn away from Him. However, um, there has been a surge in uh, some Armenians believing in conditional security or that a believer, a genuine believer, can off his own or her own free will turn away from Christ and lose their salvation. So with that, ang buong point na to is so that you would get to know Calvinism a bit more. So I'm going to hop on to it and actually go through the five points with textual basis. Now a heads up, most of the texts I'm going to get are from the Book of Romans, are from Corinthians, Ephesians, the writings of Paul. I'm also going to get from John. And um, towards the end, I'm going to show how even in the Old Testament, merong consistency yung dinidiscuss natin. So let's start with total depravity. Um, the main way that we define total depravity is that our sinful corruption makes us slaves of sin and morally unable to overcome our own rebellion and blindness. Um, I- I- Later, we're going to show a text about that. But I just want to make that clear. No, um, When we talk about total depravity, we mean that we cannot come to God on our own. And so we're utterly dependent on God's grace to overcome our rebellion, give us eyes to see, and effectively draw us to the Savior. So, unang text, Romans 3, 9, 11. This is the Apostle Paul speaking, and sabi niya, What then? Are we Jews any better off? Um, Kausap niya Roman Christians dito. Some of them are Jews, some of them are Gentiles. And the question is, mas okay ba na maging Jew kaysa maging Gentile? And the answer is, oo oh, naman. Kasi nasa kanila yung Bible, nasa kanila yung prophets, nasa kanila yung tradition that helps them understand a bit more about Jehovah. True. But Paul actually says, no, not at all. Bakit? Kasi hindi problem na wala kayong revelation. Hindi problem na wala kayong access sa... Sa scripture. The main problem is this, that Mapa, Jew or Greek, we are under sin. And he quotes the prophet Isaiah, where the prophet Isaiah says, None is righteous, no, not one, no one understands, no one seeks for God. Now, a, a heads up, pag sinabing none is righteous, we don't mean to say na, now, hindi kaya ng tao gumawa ng moral actions. No. Bakit? Kasi, I'll be honest, some unbelievers are more well-mannered than I am. Some unbelievers are kinder than I am. Some unbelievers are more moral than I am. But what Paul is saying here is this. Morality, outside of faith in Christ, is still sin. 
Kaya sabi sa Romans 14.23, whatever does not proceed from faith is sin. So for example, let's say um, ikaw ay estudyante, hindi ka nangungopia. Bakit hindi ka nangungopia? Dahil takot kang mapinalize ng academic institution. Is that moral? It's a moral thing not to cheat. Pero your motive is not to glorify God. It's not to depend on the God of knowledge and wisdom. Your motive is to escape punishment. Or how about this? Um, I could be someone helping the poor. And the next question is, bakit? It's because I want to be able to go to heaven when I die. And then, makikita mo doon that ultimately, it's self-preservation at play. Your motive is not to glorify God. It's so that I wouldn't be burnt to a crisp spiritually. So, if one person does good, but it's not out of gratitude towards God, it's not out of looking to Him, then that is not righteous. And so, sabi ni Paul dito, no one seeks for God. It is not as though um, we do not, even though we can. It's actually that we can't. But something to to uh, ground us a bit more, no? I- I've been hearing some things go around like, you know what? Uh, total depravity means that I am as bad as Hitler. Now, yes and no. Yes in the sense that I am equally in need of a savior as Hitler is. But it is not true that I am doing the height of evil that Hitler is doing. Bakit? Part of what we believe as well is that the grace of God restrains our evil. And so, naglagay si Lord ng laws, naglagay si Lord ng conscience to restrain that. And so, when we talk about the totality of our depravity, ibig sabihin nun na none of our actions, we are totally unpleasing to God, but it doesn't mean that we are all as destructive as we could be. No, God still puts a cap even on our evil. And so si Paul, speaking of himself, ang sabi niya, I know that nothing good dwells in me that is in my flesh. And it's funny kasi Paul was talking about himself in a state of being a Pharisee. He was someone obeying the law, the the, the Ten Commandments, and the other 633 social cultural commands given. And yet he says that despite all that discipline, there is nothing in him commendable before God. And so, um, sabi niya sa Romans 8, 7 to 8, when it comes to us and our attempts to honor God, the mindset on the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law. Bakit? Because it has no ability. It can not. Kasi yung flesh daw natin, our impulse is directed against God and it is in opposition to Him. Those who are in the flesh cannot please God. That is the sad reality of human condition. We are totally depraved. And so, papalitan ko lang yung sequence ng onte. Bakit? Kasi if we cannot choose God, then the next thing that we need to talk about is how then can we choose God? And so the answer has to be that God's grace has to have a mechanism that can turn that around. And the yung idea of irresistible grace. And what we mean by that is that the resistance that all human beings exert against God every day is overcome at the proper time by God's saving grace. Now, when we talk about yung resistance, um, si Stephen, in front of the, the Israelites, and particularly the Sanhedrin, ang sabi niya, you stiff-necked people, uncircumcised in heart and ear, you always resist the Holy Spirit as your fathers did, so do you. Now, it's interesting kasi, ang sabi niya dito, you resist the Holy Spirit. Well, what did the Holy Spirit do for them? Um, well, one, from their history, the Holy Spirit has been the one guiding them, giving them uh, divine revelation. And actually, the Holy Spirit is also the one that um, allowed some of them to actually remain faithful to Jehovah. Pero, ang sabi dito ni Stephen, you have done consistently to resist them. You've killed the prophets. When Jesus came, instead of repenting and putting your faith in him, instead of listening to him, you killed him. You didn't just kill the prophets, you killed the Son of God, and here you are right now, you're persecuting me. You're not even listening to our testimony. Now, dito, well, Stephen was speaking particularly of the Jews. It's also true that everywhere you look, that is the stance of the human heart. Um, whether we pursue morality outside of God, whether we go against our conscience flat out, there is the human tendency to resist the Holy Spirit. And so, 
Ang sabi ni Jesus, pagdating dito, there can only be one solution. Ano yun? That the Father draw you to come to me. In fact, Jesus says that no one can come to him unless the Father who sent him draws him. And this drawing is the sovereign work of grace without which none of us will be saved from our rebellion against God. Now, since nasa John 6 tayo, um, let's actually look a bit lower sa John 6 and uh, look at what Jesus means by this. Sa John 6, sabi niya, there are some of you who do not believe. For Jesus knew from the beginning who those were who did not believe and who it was who would betray him. Stop. Sino yun? Of course, that's, that's Judas. And ang sabi niya next is, and he said, this is why I told you that no one come to me unless it is granted him by the Father. So, what we see here is, kanina, sa 44, Jesus talks about a drawing. And then, sa 64 to 65, Jesus now gives an example. And Jesus says that the reason he mentioned 20 verses earlier that no one can come to him unless it is granted is to explain why there are people who do not believe. And Jesus from the beginning knew that Judas would not believe on him in spite of all the teaching and invitations that he would receive. In fact, uh, just to let you know, no, I think Judas has way better exposure than most of us ever will. No, You're listening to R.C. Sproul. You're listening to Omar Aureliano. You're listening to William Lane Craig. Judas listened to Jesus himself. And uh, if ever, na, we're talking about the opportunity to believe, Judas had that maximally more than any of us ever will. But the point of Jesus here is that Judas's resistance to grace was not the ultimately decisive factor. What was ultimately decisive was that it was not granted him to come. He was not drawn by the Father, and the decisive, irresistible gift of grace was not given to Judas. And so this is why we speak of irresistible grace. Bakit? In ourselves, we are all just as resistant to grace as Judas. I, I don't know about you, but there was a point in time when I would look at at this teaching about the gospel, this teaching about Jesus. And who the hell is this person talking to me, telling me that I need someone to forgive my sins? I, I can't do anything about my condition. I need to repent. Hello, I'm good as is. Pero, in spite of that resistance, the reason any of us has come to Jesus is not because we're smarter, wiser, or more virtuous than Judas, but simply the fact that the Father overcame our resistance and drew us to himself. And so, pagdating sa salvation natin, here's what I love. Jesus dying on the cross, paying for our sins, rising up again to give us new life, that's a gift. Absolutely. 100%. But Calvinism pushes that a bit further. And we say, it's not just salvation that's a gift. Even my faith and repentance is a gift. Ang sabi sa 2 Timothy 2, Verse 24 to 25, this is Paul speaking to Timothy about some people who were corrupting the teaching of the church. Ang sabi niya kay Timothy, The Lord's servant must not be quarrelsome, but kind to everyone, able to teach, patiently enduring evil, correcting his opponents with gentleness. Why? God may perhaps grant them repentance leading to a knowledge of truth. Gaya sa 6, 65, na binasa natin from John, that coming to Jesus was granted by the Father. So here Paul says that repentance is granted by God. Ang sabi niya, God may perhaps grant them, ito yung mga heretical teacher, repentance. Now notice, dito sa text na to, salvation is a gift, but it's not what is talked about when it's speaking of something being granted by God. He's saying that even the requirement of salvation is a gift. And so when a person hears a preacher say, repent and come to Christ, he can choose to resist that call. He can disobey. He can say, I will not repent. But if God gives him repentance and God wants to bring him into his fold, because from the beginning of time, he was among the elect, that person cannot resist because the very meaning of the gift of repentance is that God has changed our heart and made it willing to repent. And so just a quick caveat, no? I know us Calvinists, um, we're often looked at as the angry guy in Christianity. Actually, balik tad. The Calvinist should be the happy guy, chill guy, calm guy in Christianity. Bakit? We just say the truth and God will be the one to enlighten the person we're speaking to. Why? Because it's his gift. Opening of hearts and minds is the gift of God. And so Calvinists are among the chill preachers out there. Now, 
I, I know with that said, no, the next thing that many people would ask would be, eh, ba't pa tayo magsishare ng gospel? Ba't pa tayo magpreach? Eh kung, get one, na God will save whomever He will save, and that uh, at any time God can overcome the resistance of human hearts, then why should I, why should I go out to people who would ostracize me? Why should I go out to people who would shame me when I could be comfortable in my home and just be with my uh, church and go kumbaya, kumbaya until Jesus comes back? And the answer is because God has means. God has appointed preaching as the means by which people are saved. And another thing that's often brought up is this. Um, then doesn't that make God someone who who goes against what a person would will? Um but preaching isn't supposed to make uh, someone who's unwilling all go and put their faith even amidst that unwillingness. Actually, the moment that preaching is given and God touches their heart, the unwilling becomes willing by a supernatural act of grace that we call regeneration. God makes the person listening alive to his realities. And saan natin makikita yun? In 1 Corinthians 1, 23-24, ang sabi ni Paul, we preach Christ crucified a stumbling block to Jews and folly to Gentiles, but to those who are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. Um, okay. There's a general call. There's that preacher coming up on Sunday, telling people about sin, telling them about Christ. Everyone hears it. But then in the audience, may dalawang types down na nakaupo. There will be one who's gonna sit there and say, yeah, I need to get this done get home, do the laundry, and and continue with my life. This is something I'm doing because my family is here. But outside of tradition, this doesn't concern me. This is folly. This is foolishness. But in the same audience, hearing the same words, hearing the same general call, there's still one group what was foolishness to one group. To them, this is, thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Thank you for bringing me to salvation. Thank you for in eternity past, hiding this and now bringing it to light in Jesus Christ. Salamat because I'm saved and this is something I hold dear to my heart. What's the difference? The difference is effectual calling. There are those sitting there for whom as the preaching of the word, the preaching of the gospel is given, the Holy Spirit does something beautiful in their hearts. And this is, this is the picture of, of what happens. Ang sabi ni Paul sa 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4 to 6, The God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. For what we proclaim is not ourselves, but Jesus Christ as Lord, with ourselves as your servants for Jesus' sake. For God who said, Let light shine out of darkness, has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Now, Nakikita niyo yung picture na sinasabi ni Paul? If supposing this, the room you're in was completely pitch dark, there's nothing to be seen. But when light comes in, kahit gaano ka dark yan, the light will be seen all throughout and blindness will be taken away. God works to change our will without coercion. Since men are blind to the worth of Christ, a miracle is needed in order for them to come to see and believe. And so Paul compares this miracle with the first day of creation. Ang sabi niya, in the same way that God said, let there be light, and there was light in the first day, then when God says, let there be light, no matter how dark your heart is, your heart will receive the gladness of Jesus, and you will see the sovereign creative power of God, and the cross will stop looking as if it was foolishness, but it will start looking as the power and the wisdom of God. Yung effectual call na pinag-uusapan natin, that's the miracle of having our blindness removed. And it is God who causes the glory of Christ to be seen with irresistible beauty. And so, since that beauty is irresistible, that grace is irresistible. And so, um, this isn't just in, in, in Paul talking about preaching. See si John's opening ng gospel niya. Ang sabi niya, sa kanya introduction, but to all who did receive him, who received Jesus, who believed in his name, he, Jesus, gave the right to become children of God who were born not of blood, nor of the will of flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. John says that God gives the right to become the children of God to all who receive Christ. Then he goes on to say that those who receive Christ are born because of God. Hindi mo pinili, it's not 
flesh. It's not human decision. In other words, it's necessary to receive Christ in order to become a child of God. We affirm that. But the birth that brings one into the family of God is not possible by your choosing, by my choosing. It's something that God has to first choose that will allow us now to choose Him. Only God can do that work. And so, um, talking about irresistible grace, I think the next question to be asked is, okay, so we know now we're, it's impossible for us to come to God, and so God has to do something wonderful in our heart, regeneration, and that's where irresistible grace um, overcomes our resistance. Now, paano naman yung death ni Christ? For whom did Jesus die? Now, for us Calvinists, there's something I want to, to clarify now. We, we, we affirm 100% that the death of Christ is sufficient for all humans and it's effective for those who trust Him. Hindi kulang in worth or sufficiency yun death ni Jesus to save all who believe. Kaya naniniwala kami sa atonement. No. It's not that kulang yung blood ni Christ and so it has to be given to a certain group only. But we want to say that whatever Christ died to purchase is received with certainty and with a guarantee. And so the full saving effectiveness of the atonement that Jesus accomplished is limited to those for whom that saving effect was prepared for. Now Jesus himself, sa John chapter 10, ang sabi niya, yung ginagawa daw niya is for a particular group only, the sheep. Uh, I am the good shepherd, this is Jesus speaking. I know my own and my own know me. Just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. And I have other sheep that are not of this fold. I must bring them also. They will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. And this is verse 26. But you do not believe because you are not among my sheep. Stop. Sabi ni Jesus, meron daw two types of people that he's speaking to right now. The sheep who listen to his voice. And then those people who do not listen because they are not his sheep. Now, finally, he also mentioned some sheep who are currently not of his fold. Ibig sabihin natin yung mga hindi pa naniniwala sa kanya at that point. These are the people who will believe after his death, after his resurrection. This is the people who will believe decades, centuries, millennium from now. Um, and and what, what Jesus here is saying is, the sheep listen. Those who are not the sheep will not listen. And so he died only for those who listen to him, only for the sheep. Now, the next question is, wait lang, but aren't there texts in the Bible where it says that Christ draws all men to himself? And absolutely, it's the same guy who wrote John 10, John 12. Sabi ni, ni John, as he was recording Jesus speak, ang sabi ni Jesus is, And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, ang ibig sabihin nung lifted up from the earth na yan, that is yung, uh, yung pagkamatay niya sa cross where he will literally be lifted up. And um, he will be the, the source of salvation for all people. It doesn't mean all individuals across history. Why? Well, so John 11, uh, there's, a similar, uh, there's a similar text that we could use to interpret yung all people dyan. Si Caiaphas, he was saying sa, dun sa leadership of the Israelites, do you not understand it is better for one man to die for the people than the whole nation to perish? And then John offers his commentary, ang sabi niya, he did not say this, si Caiaphas, of his own accord, but being high priest that year, he prophesied that Jesus would die for the nation and not for the nation only, but also to gather into one the children of God scattered abroad. Stop. Yung people daw for whom Christ died are those children of God who are scattered abroad. Um, who's that? Um, that's the Gentile abroad. That's the Roman abroad. That's the Greek abroad. And yet, who are children of God? And so when we look at all people, so John 12, 32, we don't mean all individuals. What we mean is all types of people, all nationalities, all languages, all, all socioeconomic strata, all, all intellectual levels, all personality types, kung psych ka man at naniniwala ka sa uh, extrovert, introvert, openness, conscientious, chu 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 that means all types of people. Now, it's not just in in this that we see that uh, the all people does not mean all, 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 
but it just means all types. Pagdating natin sa, Ro- sa Revelations 5, we would find this where the, the, the people in heaven are singing to Jesus and ito yung sinabi nila. By your blood, you ran some people for God from every tribe. And uh, sa Mark 10, 45, you would notice that Jesus doesn't say, I have come to give my life as a ransom for all. He says, as a ransom for many. And pagdating naman si Hebrews 9, 28, ang sabi dito, is Christ having been offered once to bear the sins of many, okay, not all, will appear a second time not to deal with sin, but to save those who are eagerly waiting for Him. Sino yung many? The elect who are eagerly waiting for Him. Now, I come to my favorite text, and you're gonna. You, I'm not sure if you noticed, but I'm actually bringing up Romans eight and Romans nine a lot. Um, but Romans eight for me is one reason why limited atonement is important for me. Because, sabi sa Romans eight twenty eight, since God did not spare His own Son but gave Him up for us all, He will most certainly give us all things with Him. Ani all things? Yun yung kasunod na verse in twenty nine thirty thirty one. Yung pagiging foreknown, predestined, justified, sanctified, glorified. All those gifts. So if I were to look at 28 only and I were to rephrase that, it would be like, God didn't spare his son. God sent his son to die. God sent his son to die for us who will most certainly give us all things with him. Now, if ang ibig sabihin yan is, God gave us his son for all types of people, then all people okay, which should most certainly get all these things, the answer is, it's interesting that if Jesus died for everyone, not everyone experiences being foreknown, being predestined, being justified, being sanctified, being glorified. And so, sino lang dapat yung people for whom Christ died? If if that line next, yung he will most certainly, I will repeat that, most certainly, para kanino lang yung certainty na yan, only for those who will experience all the gifts Therefore, the only way that Romans 28 can make sense is if 29 to 31 were speaking for a group for whom Christ already bought that. And so um, there we would be willing to say that atonement, Jesus dying, the people for whom God did not spare his own son are only those who will experience 29 to 31. And so um, with that said, I know that the next conversation is, so pinag for whom did Christ die, the elect, then how do we know who the elect is? And uh, the answer is, we don't. That's all. But if ever there was one who knew who the elect is, it would be God himself. Bakit? Because God's election is the unconditional act of free grace given through his son Jesus before the world began. And mahalaga sa akin yung before the world began. And later you're going to find Paul bringing that up. By this act, God shows before the foundation of the world those who would be delivered from bondage to sin and brought to repentance and saving faith in Jesus. Now, um, in Romans 9, and I think this is our favorite chapter on election, um, sabi nila, there are some who say that election here in Romans 9 was talked about on corporate and individual basis. Um, some would say corporate lang. Bakit? Uh, see, dito sa Romans 9 to 2, you would see Paul bring up his kinsmen. And if ever na bring up si Esau at si Jacob, it's only to show yung role nila in history, Jacob being the one in reference to the Israel of God, and then si Esau for those who will not put their faith in him. Uh, and so, sa totoo lang, God didn't individually elect people. He elected corporately only. And I'm gonna say that's baloney. Bakit? Listen to the tone of Paul here. I have great sorrow and unceasing anguish in my heart for I. Individually, I, Paul, I could wish that I, I myself, were a curse and cut off from Christ for the sake of my brothers, my kinsmen, according to the flesh. Now, one thing I want us to remember is that Paul is a strict logician. He loves parallelism. If if individual, yung accursedness ko, for the individual being cut off from Christ, nung aking brethren, then those two should be speaking on the same Level now, of course, um, Paul here is at one point talking about the whole Israel, but at the same time, when he's talking about all Israel, he's also talking about individuals in Israel. And so, um, we I, I would actually be on, on, on the part where we should say it is both talking about corporate and individual election. And to further ground that, 
Sa Romans 9:11 to 13, na sabi ni Paul, though they, si Jacob and Esau, were not yet born and had done nothing either good or bad, in order that God's purpose of election might continue, not because of works, but because of him who calls, she was told, the older will serve the younger, as it is written, Jacob I loved, Esau I hated. Now, dito, ang sabi ni Paul is, though they were not yet born and had done nothing, either good or bad, oh, of course, someone might say, yeah, sure, um, when we say that God foreknown, uh, who would be saved, of course, he wasn't looking at what they at what they did in that point of time. Pero, ang sinasabi ni Paul is, even to the exclusion of all their acts, and even their choice are acts. And God here, sabi ni Paul, so that the purpose of election might stand, He chose them freely out of sheer pleasure, not even counting their decisions or even their choosing or not choosing of Him. And if I may argue, okay, if we're gonna say na actually God looked at their merit and saw that uh, Jacob is uh, is a better man than Esau, I would ask you to reconsider that. Bakit? Really? Jacob, any better? The guy's a cheater. Esau, sure, temper. But both of them are equally bad. And so, dito, the only way that either one of them could be saved, that either one of them could come to a relationship with God is if God, without condition, chose just because he wanted to. Now, the other text that uh, some would bring up this uh, discussion of corporate and individual election would be Ephesians 1, 3 to 6 and 11. Bakit? Here, Paul says something wonderful. Um, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, even as He chose us in Him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and blameless before Him. Ay, umulit! In love, He predestined us for adoption as sons through Jesus Christ, according to the purpose of His will, to the praise of His glorious grace. Now, some will say that the predestination dito is God electing Christ and electing him as the one through whom adoption will happen. So the election daw dito is talking about Christ and not talking about the individuals elected in Christ. But verse 11 would pose a problem there. Bakit? Kasi sa verse 11 ang sabi, In him we have obtained an inheritance having been predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things. Now, now what that means is, if God elected Christ to be the one through whom adoption will happen, then even the adoption was something that God elected as well in the same manner, which is the manner na before the foundation of the world, even before uh, our, con- our decisions could be considered. And so even here, you would find that corporate and individual elections should not be treated separately. No, they're actually together even here. And w- when we look at Romans 8.28, I promise that it's something we're going to be going back to a lot. Um, some would say, you know what, actually, ang sabi sa 29 is those whom he foreknew, he also predestined. Tina mo, um, yung foreknew jan means that the ones God predestined are those whom he had known in advance, he had known the decisions in advance, he had known the events in advance, and that was the basis of predestination. But I would argue na, actually, if you were to look at the Old Testament, um, the way that God uses that, that, that phrasing, yung I have known you, it's never been used in a passive way. It's always been used with an active involvement and in an active engagement. Um, for example, when he saw, when he said na, I have known Israel, um, ibig sabihin nun na, he didn't just know that uh, Israel, Jacob, would be and that he would be the, 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 the father of, of the nation of Israel, but he also was the one who shaped that process. God's foreknowledge is him actively pursuing, actively shaping, who he wanted Jacob to become. And so, uh, the, the other way that you could say this is those whom God cared about and whom God had active involvement and active engagement in from the beginning of time, he predestined. And, and not only did he predestine them, uh, he also conformed them to the image of his son. And those whom he predestined, he called, he justified, and he glorified. And so, yung foreknowing ni God, it's not passive. It's always active. He acts to make it so. And I just want to end this discussion bago pumunta sa perseverance of the saints with Romans 9, 15 to 16. And this is God speaking. Ang sabi niya, I will have mercy on whom I have mercy and I will have compassion on whom I have compassion. So then it depends not on human will or exertion, but 
on God who has mercy. Now, perseverance of the saints, I hope this is not something that uh, you guys are uh, are, are going to raise an eyebrow about. But if ever you do, then uh, I'm going to spend a bit more time on it too. So, naniniwala kami that, we, that those who are justified will win the fight of faith. That they will persevere in faith and will not surrender finally to the enemy of their souls. Again, my favorite verse, Romans 8. Um, if you notice here, Paul is actually speaking in past tense. And those who need justified, the moment you put your faith in Christ, your sins are forgiven in God's eyes, you stand with a righteousness that cannot be taken away from you. You are justified in that sense. But then Paul now speaks of you being glorified. Hindi ka pa naman patay. Wala pa naman yung next coming. Uh, how are you now glorified? Well, for those whom God saves, in his mind, it's already a done deal that you will get to the end. And he will tell you, well done, good and faithful servant. And again, my bro John, wow no, bro John, well actually when I get to heaven, I'm going to rap with him. Um, as I said, John 10, 27 to 30, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. I give them eternal life and they will never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. Bakit? My father who has given them to me is greater than all and no one is able to snatch them out of the father's hand. I and the father are one. So sabi dito ni Jesus is, if you are in me, you, you are among the sheep. If you have listened to me, I died for you. And since I died for you, my blood will not be wasted. I will keep you and make sure that you get home safely. The Trinity is involved in your security. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are all involved in the project that is your salvation. And so, I want to give this reality check pa din. Ano yun? Sabi ni Paul sa 1 Corinthians 15, 1-2, Now I remind you, brothers, of the gospel. I preach to you which you received, in which you stand, and by which you are being saved. If you hold fast to the word I preach to you, unless you believed in vain. Stop. There is such a thing as believing in vain. Um, let me give an example. Sabi ni Jesus, there was this parable of the four soils, right? He was the one who gave that parable. And he said na the seed of the gospel was thrown out. There are some on whom the gospel lands and they don't really think much about it. So the devil comes along, takes it away. There are those for whom the gospel falls, it, bears, it, it takes root. Pero it doesn't last. Bakit? Well, there are two that Jesus points to. Yung una daw, there are those for whom the cares of the world Soak it. And then there are those for whom the persecution of, of life or, or of unbelievers is the one that takes it away. What does that tell us? They did not believe in Christ such as to make him their only hope and their only security. What do I mean? If because of the cares of this world, no wala yung faith mo kay Christ, that means at root, Jesus was not the one you were depending on. Your faith was not ultimately in Christ. Your faith was ultimately on whatever you think will give you your needs for life. Um, if the cares of the world means the next bills to pay and you realize Christianity demands too much of me, I, I can't be part of a church, um, it takes up too much time, I would rather work and involve all my life in getting in rather than God, then I'm sorry to say, but you weren't genuinely saved. If naman your problem is, ayokong ayoko yung ostracize ako, ayoko yung pinapahiya ako about this Jesus thing, then I'm sorry to say, but Jesus is not the one who holds the affection of your heart. He has not been your Lord at all. Your Lord becomes, or your Lord remains, the people in your life, the people you try to get approval from. And so there is such a thing as believing in vain, and that basically means that it was not a genuine believing at all. Therefore, what we mean when we say that faith must persevere to the end is that we must never come to a point of renouncing Christ with such hardness of heart that we can never return. But instead, okay, and I'm, I'm going to be careful with how I say this, huh? If ever na you would fall, you fall only to the degree that you become a hypocrite in your professed faith. And what I mean by that is, it's possible for me to be a Christian and to make a profession of faith, but live out of alignment with that for a time. But if I'm a genuine believer, the Holy Spirit will discipline me. I will be brought back to alignment. Pero if I harden my heart and I renounce Christ the same way that those two, yung binanggit sa parable of the four souls, who renounce Christ because of the cares of the world, who renounce Christ because of the persecutions that they faced, then in that sense, delikado tayo 
you weren't saved in the first place. But if you are a believer and every now and then like, you mess up, here is something that um, I, I want to give you as a, as a comfort. John Piper, uh, in, in interpreting this, he said that persevering faith does not mean that the saints do not go through seasons of doubt, spiritual darkness, measure of unbelief in the promise and goodness of God. And if you were honest, right, you would say, actually, I, I kind of am in Christ, pero every now and then, there are days when I don't trust His promises, there are days when I question Him, but it doesn't mean you lose your salvation. It, it, it just means that the faith that God has given you, you are flagging, but the Holy Spirit will keep it burning. Uh, and so what do we do in those times? We say with the guy in Mark 9, 24, Jesus, I believe, help my unbelief. And it's not a contradictory prayer at all. Why? Because measures of unbelief can coexist with true, genuine faith. And so for those who actually let go of their faith, um, John tells us, they went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would have continued with us. But they went out that it might be plain that they are not of us. Um, this is just going back in similarity to the John 10 conversation we had where Jesus said, if you did not ultimately listen to my voice, you weren't among my sheep. Now, way back in the Old Testament, the prophet Jeremiah said this. Pagdating daw dun sa New Covenant na pinag-uusapan natin ngayon, the, the covenant we're part of as New Testament people, ang sabi ni God, pagdating sa covenant na yon, I, si God daw, God will make with them an everlasting covenant, a covenant that they will not turn away from doing good to them. So that I will not turn away from doing good to them. And I will put the fear of me in their hearts so they may not turn from me. Sini mag make sure that you will not turn away from him? God will make sure that you won't turn away from him. God will be the one to put the fear of him in your heart. God will be the one to make sure that you stay in this covenant. Bakit? I died for you. My blood is precious. I won't waste my son's blood. And so your covenant assurance is yours in peace and rest and joy. And, and I just want to end with this, 1 Peter 1.5. And this is something that, I guess, um, I want to say as a Calvinist na I'm going to hold on to for the rest of my life. By God's power, we are guarded through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. How am I saved? By God's power. How am I um, going to stay saved? By God's power. Why was I saved? To demonstrate God's power. Um, some people say that Calvinists tend to uh, disproportionately emphasize God's sovereignty that we tend to disproportionately emphasize God's role in salvation. And actually, I would say the opposite. I feel like we have not emphasized it enough because God deserves infinitely more glory, more honor, and more praise than we ever will give Him. And so I would say the problem with Calvinism is not that we give God too much credit. The problem is that we don't give God enough credit yet. And I pray that we do one day with our lives and with our preaching. And so... Uh, some final remarks, okay? I just want to say throughout this whole conversation that Calvinism has text, textual basis. And I hope that as you go through the next sessions, you will find that Arminianism also has textual basis. Molinism also has textual basis. I, I, I say this nicely and gently, but uh, even provisionism may have some textual basis. But if ever anyone were to have any soteriology, it must be rooted in the Word. And so the, the Word of God is our final test for anything. And yet, okay, and one one quick uh, thing to raise is a lot of people accuse Calvinists of not being evangelistically given. On the contrary, as a Calvinist, I love sharing the gospel, Barrett. Because even if you keep refusing, when my God says you're chosen, you're chosen, my gospel sharing is not in vain. He will break down your hardness of heart and bring final victory in Christ. And so, pagdating naman sa perseverance of the saints, some say Calvinists tend to have lax laxness in Christian living. Because Kasi, total, God will keep me... Actually, the opposite. Kasi Paul says um, in Philippians, work out your salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God who works in you to will and to act. As a Calvinist, I believe even my sanctification is something by God. Now, just a heads up, salvation is monergistic, meaning that's all of God, but sanctification is synergistic. God and I partner together in this enterprise, but my partnership would not be possible if not for God's first act. And so, um, on the contrary, I should be more given to pursue holiness. Bakit? Well, it's God working in me. And if it's God working in me, I'm partnered with the best ever. 
And that should be my hope and my source for persevering. And ito, um, I know that for us Calvinists, we have been accused as the uh, as uh, the black sheep of the Christian family for picking fights wherever we do. And we are, uh, in more ways than one, the ones accused of breaking Christian unity. But actually, that's not the case. Bakit? Um, kasi pagdating natin sa heaven, we will all be Calvinists anyway. So, uh, I could bear with you being of a different soteriological stance. But kidding aside, kidding aside, um, if ever there's any disagreement, sabi nga natin kanina, well, actually, it was Paul telling Timothy, actually, um, Calvinism should be among the most gentle, kind, and chill when it comes to to correcting and rebuking. Bakit? Because it's God who's gonna grant the enlightenment. It's God who's gonna open their hearts and minds. And so, um, Uh, Calvinism in itself is not the issue. Mga problema na lang yun ng personality ng mga nakasalamuhan yun. So, um, but then the other thing is, all throughout history, you also find um, godly men and women partnering together despite having different sotoriological stances. Um, Whitfield and Wesley, right? Um, George Whitfield, great Calvinist, Wesley, great Arminian, and yet, pag tinanong mo sila, um, I would not be anywhere near Wesley when we go home. Because Wesley is near the throne of God for all the work that he's done. And yet, uh, Wesley could say, could say the same of, of, of Whitfield. And so, um, there should not be any reason why we should break fellowship over this. On the contrary, because we are both talking about how God loved us. To the very least, um, there should be more, more love and unity among us because of the shared experience of salvation. Now, a heads up. Dependent as a church nyo, um, to the degree that they would accept uh, they would accept membership and to the degree of office that you hold, okay, kung ikaw naman ay nasa church, na requirement for office, mag-adhere ka to a particular uh, set of sotoriological teaching, tapos ikaw eh, hindi nag affirm noon, eh baka panahon na para lumipat ka instead of mag ka ng lagim wherever you are. But yeah, um, my final remark is this. Pagdating na sa heaven, you're all gonna say, God's election stands. And he chose out of his great pleasure in in eternity past. So yeah, when you get to heaven, I'm looking forward to seeing you all be Calvinists. That's that's half a joke and half legit. So, merong question kanina doon sa wait lang, hinahanap ko yung sa John 3.16. Ewan ko if natabunan siya. Siguro unahin natin yan bago yung... Ayun, si Leia sabi niya. So in January 16, yung whoever believes baro, under ba siya sa choosing pa din ni God? Ayun. Sige. Go, Cal. So yun sa John T16. Wait, andyan pa si Leia? Hi, Leia. Yes, nandito siya. Hmm. So, John 16, For God so loved the world that He gave His only Son that whoever believes in Him should not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send His Son into the, into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through Him. I don't think this is talking about election. I think this is just talking about uh, about the, how God wants salvation to happen. However, kung tinatanong mo, is sino yung world na minamahal ni Lord, that would be a good discussion. Um, particularly because um, There, there are that that's where the main discussion comes in because the world that we would uh, look there is the the world that those who those who would believe in the world yun yung what we would look at that as um but yeah i don't think this is referring to election if that's what you're asking and by the okay. way i brought i brought a, another calvinist here si gerard pilaes as part of the open forum uh papa gerard could also help me out Pero yeah, um, sorry, yun ba yung particular na tanong mo pagdating doon sa pagdating sa John 16? Kung election yung pinapoint doon? Kasi I don't think that's about election itself, pero how God designed um, the way of salvation. Yan, pwede ka mag-respond lang para ma-clarify lang kay Kalim. Hindi naman ako nangangagat. 
Tsaka kahit mga get man ako na, nasa Zoom naman. So, good news siya. Naka-meet pa rin siya ito. Okay. Well, kung sakali. Uh, yes, daw no election that God desires to save the world really wants to save. Ah, okay, okay. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, pero yun, I'm of the opinion na uh, this does not, act, the context itself does not talk about election in itself. Ano? That, that text does not refer to election. Okay. Sige, next, si Sham. Yung nag, nakataas siya ng kamay. Tas... No, go Sham. Hi. So, uh, actually, I've been, as of late, I've been reading about Calvinism. Come on! Yeah, it's, it's kasi I've noticed some some of my friends medyo have negative views. It's it's not naman, when I ask them, it's not about ang comments, it's that it's not about the teaching of Calvinism, but rather the people. Uh and when I that's made me that made me uh curious about it. So when I when I read more, I found about something called hyper Calvinism. Na parang yung concept nila is that uh God is uh yung the belief is that uh yung election of sovereign has uh yung election has no use yung how do I put it yung actions mo as a person walang responsive wala ka talagang what you do does not save you ika nga so and medyo it has gone to a point na parang it has caused them to approach people in a way na you, it has caused people to like bumababa yung faith nila in a way kasi parang ay wala talaga akong magagawa sa lahat ng ginagawa ko pala ang meaningless pala so my yeah. question is that how do you feel about that na parang does it kasi there are people na medyo radical sa kanilang sa kanilang approach to towards that phrase na parang election and like how your action is not wala talagang magagawa yung actions mo. So yan. Thanks Pops. And kunwari hindi, hindi tayo same circle of friends. <laughs> 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 yeah. Pero I guess uh, may, may tatlong layer ako ng sagot dyan. Um, the first layer is uh, I think hindi problem yung hyper-Calvinism ng, ng friends atin bro. Feeling ko ang problem yung mga Calvinist na hyper- Ah, uh, yan yung mga tawag natin cage stage Calvinist. Um so so just to give you an idea, if you're not familiar with the cage stage Calvinist is for the first time, um they learn about these things. Now what? So you mean um when when I got saved, I I didn't get saved because I chose God, but I chose God because God chose me. So even before pa ako maging believer, God already loved me with a particular love that's awesome. I'm angry now. Why didn't my church talk about it? May mga tao kasi na when they see uh tulip when they see Calvinist soteriology parang all of a sudden may excitement sa kanila na medyo militant na talaga nang aaway sila sa church so bakit din niyo kagad tinuro and of course the answer is kasi it is not the gospel it it, it, it is uh, a part of expounding how you're saved but it's not the main thing that we should be telling people when when we share the gospel and so pagdating sa cage stage Calvinist ng na mga nang aaway uh, what i would recommend is Isama mo sa conversations na ganito. Um, let them know uh, Calvinists who are sober. Um, so, I hope I'm sober. Pero my good brother, Jared Pela, is right here. Um, Ed Carl, kanina alam ko nandito siya. Uh, lo- uh, now, uh, di ko sure, pero alam ko si Conrad din. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, there are communities where you can actually uh, hold this particular soteriology without picking a fight. And uh, maganda din na ma-expose sila sa ibang... Uh, ibang stances, that way, they would find, hey, you know what? My soteriology is as valid as yours. But validity does not mean correctness. So, Calvinism is correct and valid at the same time. Um, but then the second thing that I want to d- dive a bit more about is yung hyper-Calvinism itself. Um, actually, yung hyper-Calvinism, i- iba siya, ano? Pero, but just to let you know about what hyper-Calvinism is, um, hyper-Calvinist, ay, ay, Jared, are, are you going to say something about hyper-Calvinism? O may hahabol ka ba? Ah, sorry. Napindot, well, sorry. Napindot, napindot. Sorry. Ah, nag-iakala, nag-iakala. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> I was hoping. The joke. Um, pero yun, uh, hyper-Calvinism is different kasi sa hyper-Calvinism, hindi mo na kailangan mag-share ng gospel. And medyo weird. 
Kasi the way that you would know na you're saved is by some inner confirmat inf- some inner confirmation. Um, and so really, parang um, they don't put as much stress on evangelism. In fact, on there's there's that extremity to it where they don't even share the gospel anymore. Kasi they hold to such uh, a disproportionate view of uh, pre- predestination. So that is not at all what we believe. It's not Calvinism at all. That's a messed up group. Kasama, you know? But yes, uh, isa sila sa mga pinagpapray natin i-grant ni Lord ng repentance at uh, dumating sila sa katotohanan. Now, the, the third layer of your uh, uh, of your question, I think, is may tanong ka kanina about some people taking election as if to mean na none of our actions now matter. Meaningless na siya. Like, bakit pa ako kailangan mag-repent? Bakit pa ako kailangan mag-put ng faith? What if at the end of the day, I'm not one of the elect? Um, two things, no? One, you don't know if you're not part of the elect. Um, the mere fact that you are here, that you've been listening to gospel preaching, um, you could at least take that as a measure of of success and con- uh, success to like, of assurance and confirmation that God, by His the predeterminism, has put me here. Then that means that I have some measure of grace in me. Now, the next thing I would ask you to do is uh, to consider the fact now, if you put your faith in Christ, you're hating sin, sin. Sin creates sorrow in you and you're striving after holiness, albeit hindi perfect, then you could see, you could say na my salvation is real. And so that 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 fear na what if I'm putting my faith in Christ in vain na hindi ako part of the elect, no. The sorrow, in, of, the sorrow against sin and you're striving after holiness and your love for Christ, that should give you some measure of encouragement. But then the other thing is pagdating sa day-to-day actions, um, there are some who go as far as saying na, e kung ganun naman pala, I can make all the bad decisions I can and God will be the one to to uh, to bring it to my redemption. Now, let me just say this. no? When uh, when the Holy Spirit regenerates you, part of what you regenerates also is your thinking. No? We love to say this. So there is such a thing as a regenerated common sense. Uh, and so, kung ikaw, you practically mess up your life, uh, hindi na kasalanan ni Lord yon. Kasalanan mo na yun. Bakit? Because Calvin, Calvinism does not deny human responsibility. We still believe in human responsibility. But what we mean is that in salvation, it is all of God. These are things that God has laid out from eternity past. And so, they're unfolding on this lifetime also takes into account our decisions. That's why see R.C. Sproul uses the term concurrent determination. God determined it, but concurrently, free will, free will, to the degree that we can exercise it, is something moving within the confines of God's determination. Ulitin ko, ah. Free will is something that takes place in the confines of God's determination. Your free choice, the responsibility that you assert and exert, it all comes from God's giving you that from the beginning of time. So just because uh, we believe in election, in God's uh, predestination, in determinism, doesn't rob us of responsibility. Yes, uh, compatibilism. Yeah, okay, Dave Palma. Palima, yeah. Uh, compatibilism, concurrent determinism. So, sorry, bro, Sam, I know that was long-winded, pero nakatulong ba? Yeah, it helped. Yeah, yeah. Na, 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 na-gets ko yung point. Okay. Thanks, bro. Yeah, although, to be fair, man, I would also agree, there are times when I am among the hyper. Uh, hyper yung kulit, no? Yeah. <laughs> At minsan OA. And if ever mm-hmm. I have at any point offended or mm-hmm. or uh, <laughs> overemphasize certain things, I apologize. And I think um, in CCF, that's something that we could also grow into. Nako, patanggal na na, may, may name dropping ng church. No. Pakirin <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, Sam. Um, Ganda ng sagot ni Kyle no? about hyper-Calvinism. Mag-move naman tayo sa comment na question. Si Leia ulit. Sabi niya, regarding Jesus died only for the elect. So, 1 Timothy 2, chapter 2, verses 1 to 7 daw, sabi, Paul calls to pay for all people 
tapos sa verse 4, God desires all people to be saved. And sa verse 6, si Jesus, he gave himself as a ransom though for all. So enlighten mo daw siya. How does a Calvinist view this verse? Yeah, um, we view it the same way that I looked at John 10 earlier. And I just want to annotate kung okay lang. So, kita ba? Yes. Right. So, dito, di ba parang you would find uh, four. This is our discussion. Na? Yung all people right here. Correct? Um, who desires all people to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. Now, dito sa verse 1, yung all people na to, in-expound ni Pablo. Ano yung all people na to? Yung kings, yung nasa high positions. So, um, what Paul is saying here is this. Um, if, you would, if you were to look at the, the letters of Paul, some would, actually may mga OA ako na yunig na, would say na he's antagonistic to those in power, to those who are rich. Kasi, for example, sa Corinthians, diba, sabi niya, not all of you were uh, of high birth. Not all of you were powerful. Pero, um, we would actually find verses like this as well, where Paul encourages Timothy to pray for kings and high positions. So the way that we interpret it is this. Yung all people dyan is defined by verse 2 so that Timothy and the church that Paul is writing to would know. You're not just to pray for the brethren. You're not just to pray for the ordinary citizen of Rome. But you're also to pray for those in standing, those who are in civil government. So that's that's how I would interpret um, 2, 1 to 7. I would take verse 2 and make that the, the main describer of 1 and even of 4. Yung for kings in high position. So like... That's the this one I was talking about earlier. All types, all social economic strata, all positions in life. Sorry, does that help? Uh, the text in there. Verse six. And it's a verse six. Who gave in himself as a ransom for all? Well, yeah. Um, I would still say that the ransom that we talked about, Paul John, of course, no. Um, we always treat a text according to the immediate context. So essentially what Paul is saying, kahit yung mga kings at yung mga people in positions of power na kinaiinisan nyo, namatay pa din si Jesus to ransom them. So that's how that's how I would interpret it based on the verses above it. Actually, kahit sa 8. Sorry, I, I like 8. Kasi sa 8, ang next na pagkakasabi ni Paul is, he, he talks about, I desire that in every place, the men should pray, lifting holy hands without anger or quarreling, Likewise, also that woman. So what you would find here is not um, a, a, an individual, each element type of thing. What you're finding here is those in power, those not in power, men and women, God ransomed all types of people for, for himself. Okay. I assume na yun na yun sa question niya about First Timothy, no? let's move dun sa kay Jean naman. Tapos after, let's get yung question ni David. So sabi ni Jean, uh, una, if Calvinist ka ba, considered ka ba na reformed agad? And if not, ano yung pinagkaiba? Tapos so, pangalawa. Si Gerard, eh. So, so uh, ano, heads up. up. Si Gerard ay reformed. <laughs> Ako ay neo-Calvinist. Bakit? Uh, and I think, Gerard, ik ikaw sumagot na to. What's the difference between someone who is reformed and someone who is just a Calvinist in soteriology? Ito okay. ba? So, proceed na kay, yung question pala na isa, hindi na ni... Oo, oh, nakita so sa kita yung isa. Um, Kaya ba magsalita? Ayan, go, go. Okay, okay. Pwede kong ano. Pero basically, so if you are a Calvinist, identify yourself as a Calvinist. Uh, usually, people immediately think of the five points of Calvinism, diba? yung soteriology. So, you can be a Calvinist, but not a Reformed, uh, and you're not, you don't belong in a Reformed congregation. So, marami kasi yung sensitive, especially sa Reformed circles, about this. Uh, for example, yung mag-turn on ako na camera. 
for example, yung mga ano, yung mga continental reformed. So, na-discuss kanina sa history ng reformation si sila Calvin and sila Luther. Yung reformation kasi nila, it's in the continent. Yun yung sa Geneva, yung yung reformation sa Germany, so on and so forth. And may reformation din sa London. Doon nag-arise yung mga Presbyterians, okay? So, hindi, Presbyterians. Kala ko, na, ko mag-LBCF ka eh, no? Yan, <laughs> yeah, yeah. nag tayo, pare. <laughs> yeah, pero, pero originally, the Reformation started in the continent. Yun yung mga continental reform. Uh, kung makikita ka mga churches na may reformed sa pangalan, except dun sa mga reformed Baptist, no? Yung mga, uh, for example, Field of Grace, Reformed Church, Kainta Heritage, Reformed Church, so on so forth. Yung tradition nila is in the continental reformed <clears throat> tradition. That means yung ginagamit nila ng mga standards for their faith is of the continent. Uh, yung tatlong yung three forms of unity, kung tawagin nila, yung Heidelberg, yung Canons of Dort, at saka yung... Belgic Confession. Belgic Confessions, Belgic. yan. Okay. Sa London naman, yung Reformation sa London... yun yung Westminster Standards, yung mga Presbyterians. Like us, sa Pilgrim Community Church, we use the Westminster uh, Standard of Faith, which is yung Westminster Confession of Faith, Shorter Catechism, at saka yung Larger Catechism. Pero ngayon, nowadays, of course, mas broader yung ano no, yung acceptance sa, sa, sa ano na, na reform, sa label na reform. Also accept those who are Um, part of the Reformed Baptist Church na meron silang confessions tulad ng LBCF, yung London Baptist Confession of Faith. No? So so if you're if your church is a confessional church, you consider yourself a, a uh, Reformed Church. So basically ganon kung yung worship nyo ay, ay Reformed, um, RPW. Uh, <laughs> Sige, pag-arali, next time na lang, next time. Pero, pero, yeah. Uh, I think yun yung nag-distinguish. Pag kasi nabi kasing Calvinist lang, um, that only pertains to soteriology. Katulad ng binanggit ni Kyle kanina, not everyone uh, is in a Reformed Church or subscribe to a certain confession. So, ayun. Yeah, actually, if, if I may know. So, for example, John, Cal- ah, John Piper. John Calvin Gagadena. <laughs> John Piper is not Reformed. But he's a Calvinist. R.C. Sproul is a Calvinist and reform. So, yeah, just to put that in uh, category. Thank you, Pastor G- Gerard. And also, if you're looking for a reformed church, check out Pilgrim Presbyterian. They're awesome. And uh, win some sila, promise. And they have a good sense of humor. That With coffee. Is... Good taste of coffee. Yeah. Sige. Thank you, Gerard, sa insight sa pag-distinguish ng Calvinist and Reform. Si, next, si Shikai na naman. Sabi niya, hello, thank you sa talk. So, it's really insightful. insightful. Sabi niya, I too am a Calvinist like you. But this question would be from a friend of mine. So, paano mo raw i-answer ang question ng friend? So, I will read it in quotation, no quote. Justice implies a moral agent. You can serve out true justice to something that doesn't have moral reasoning. As far as I know, what comes before the application of justice is the capability of moral reasoning and the ability to act. If what you do and how you act does not matter in the slightest, it's not justice. It's tyranny. Why would a perfectly loving and merciful God create somebody just for them to be predestined? to burn in hell for all eternity. Mm. Loaded! <laughs> Sino tong friend mo? Joke ka gano'n eh. Name drop daw, name drop. <laughs> name drop, the joke. Um, so una, I, I, kung okay lang no, I don't even know how many how many answers I'm gonna throw this. Pero okay lang, isa-isayin ko lang yung mga feeling kong kailangang i-respond sa kanya. So una, I think kailangan nating Um, magkaroon ng discussion on the fact na um, so mukhang ina-affirm naman niya na loving and merciful si God and parang sa kanya contradiction then that God would make someone and not and not predestined them to heaven parang let them go to hell 
Uh, first off, when God made man, He didn't made man to burn in hell. Uh, he made man so that he could fellowship with Him, so he could fe- commune with Him, so that he could enjoy the the no the the world that He made, and uh, not just the world that He made, but Himself. So. I guess the first thing we want to say is God never made anyone so that they would burn in hell. But since we have sinned, no, um, then God being just, He punishes sin, and um, the way He does that is by hell. Now, even among Calvinists, uh, merong dalawang sides ito, and I think Jared could could jump in on this uh, in a bit. Pero um, some of us believe in one-way predestination. Some of us believe in two-way predestination. The one-way predestination view is this. Na, um, God made man. God saw that, God knows that if he makes man, um, he knows that when sin comes in, there would be those, so all men would decide, not, not there would be those, huh? all men, all men would choose to sin than to follow God. And dito nagda-divert yung dalawang views ato. Um, the first view would say, and so God saw that all men would sin, so God decided to save some. So what happens is God is active in their salvation, but He is not active in their reprobation. Meaning, hindi naman sa sinabi ng Lord, okay, so ito yung pipiliin ko, the rest of you can go to hell, and I'll even speed up the process. I'll let you in on that. Um, so may ganong view na the one way predestination guys um, the other group in Calvinism is um, God saw that all men would uh, would sin and so he chose some to be saved and then for the other group since they have decided to go against him so he didn't just give them over in the sense that he let go of them uh, he actually pardon, pardons their hearts so that's something for you to know as a background Pero, ito ngayon yung next na tanong ko, yung kausap mo ba, is this person a Christian or not yet? Ayun, si Kai na ina-ask ni Kai if Christian ba? So, kung ganun, um, ganun na pagkakulig, ginatch ka agad na walang genuine faith. Um, I would go, ah, okay, who's good in theology? Um, I would go as far as saying na at this point, I want to take a step back and say na it's true na when God when God made the world, He knew that it is only through the fall that the glory of His Son in redemption could be known. And so what He did was that He decided for that glory to be seen and so he still made man, and he still chose salvation, and he still chose for some to be saved. And the beauty is that he even chose some to be saved. Because if he wanted, he could have chosen all to go to hell. And so I know that's a typical Calvinist answer, but I would actually focus more on the saving grace of Christ and his work in that. Uh, in, instead of instead of pointing them to active reprobation. But at this point, I want to ask Gerard, how would you actually handle this question? Ah, uh, yeah. Wow. But th- th- of course, this is not the first time I've encountered this question. Uh, a lot of Calvinists would would encounter this question every single day. Joke lang. Siguro. But um, I would always start with, ano eh, with how you started actually, Kyle with how God created man and all of us, right? He created us to be to be good, right? And it was our action na we sinned, we transgressed against Him. I, I think yung part na yun is laging nami-miss out na mga tao. Whenever they would ask this question, they would miss out that in the beginning, God was not at fault here. He created man good. So, so, um, there's no easy way of of answering this question pero pero answering your friend i think um tama ba yung question na nabutan ko lumabas kasi ako tapos bumalik lang ako eh. pero is this the question on 
Yung ano, ano kay, yung from Shekinah, yung sa friends. Yeah, yung... Why yeah, would yeah, the loving yung... and merciful God create someone just to burn them in hell? Yeah, so, so, um, no. Kasi God created man um, actually in the beginning good. Originally, I'd say originally created good man. And so, hindi niya tayo kinreate para lang mapunta sa hell. Kinreate niya tayo for good works, in fact. Pero it is us who wants to go to hell. <laughs> uh, I mean, yung unnatural, unnatural na ano natin because of sin. So, I, I think ganun lang siya kasimple dapat. Pero um, how that happens, it's complicated the answer easily. Pero how Kyle answered it, it's sufficient naman na. Um, yung, yung double predestination or single predestination, medyo na... <clears throat> kasi how, how, for example, Louis Burkhoff would explain double predestination is exactly how Kyle um, explained both predestinations, yung one at saka two. Kasi sinasabi ni Louis Burkhoff, it exists in the scripture. There are times that God actually hardens hearts. Tapos may mga times na God just lets them be according to their, you know, evil nature. So, so in that, in, in that, ano, in that, in that illustration, parehas na yung may kasalanan, hindi yung Diyos. Yung may kasalanan, tayo. So, ayun, I think, yung ano. So, why would, why, why would the perfectly loving and merciful God create somebody for, just for them to be predestined to burn in hell for all eternity? I, I don't think he did. I think he, he created us good. So, ayun. Kyle, would you like to Kung doon may isa pala akong ipapoint out dito. Kasi na-realize ko, mayroon pala sa pauna and, and my fault for like rushing into the the last question. Mayroon pala sa ditong part where sabi niya, justice implies a moral agent. You can't serve out true justice to something that doesn't have moral reasoning. In short, parang, correct me if I'm wrong. Ang sinasabi niya is na God should not deliver justice if in the first place unable naman yung tao to keep up with his commands. Um... Ganda na sagot ni Gerald. Hindi naman tayo originally, ano eh, totally depraved eh. Um, yeah, originally we are evil. Adam, you know, a homie father. Um, he was supposed to be able to obey God, he just didn't. And so, um, actually, God expected Adam and his sons to, to comply with him. But because of Adam messing up, now we have lost that. Since we are still sons of Adam, napasa pa rin sa atin yung responsibility niya. Now, is that unfair? Is that something outside of human experience? Actually, hindi. Kasi for example, um, alam niyo yung mga teacher na magpapa-exam. Can you say the same? Teacher, justice implies that the agent is capable of meeting your requirements. Di ba? Parang nagpa-exam ka on a 20-point calculus exam and now you're expecting us to pass. But you know that some of us aren't smart. Some of us, uh, yeah, we put in the, the effort in the books. But, you know, teacher, even if it's part of the course requirements, um, it, it's it's just not something I can do. Kasi hindi naman ako magaling sa math, magaling ako sa science, magaling ako sa English. The moment that holds, um, then then I think uh, this question should also hold. But we see in, in, in real life that that's, well, that should have been the expectation. So one, ano, totoo naman, when God demanded perfect obedience from us, Adam was in a position to actually do it. By it's Lord, eh. Pero, you know, in our current fallen state, it's actually something we see happening in the world and so it shouldn't come as a surprise to us at all. Na sometimes, some things are demanded of us that we are not at all able to meet. But, because they are in a position where they can demand, they are rightful to do so, and whether it's fair or not, it's just the way it is. Um, not saying na ganun si God, the, the responsibility to our inability is not to be chalked up to God, it's to be chalked up to our daddy, Adam. Pero in return, di ba? Yung ano naman din natin, transgressions din natin, it's something that we didn't earn. So, so the same way na sabihin mo ngayon na wala akong kinalaman eh. Nung pinanganak ako, unable na ako eh. Pero yung salvation that we receive is also not from our good works. 
it's also something that was given to us. So we don't and and in the in that we don't call that unfair, diba? Right? We call that grace. So yeah, it's unfair. <laughs> yeah, unfair. Be salvation the whole. Unfair. I should be burning in hell. <laughs> yeah, pero, yeah. 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 God did not predestine them to hell. God created kasi originally man na good. Tapos pangalawa is that, of course, kahit naman meron tayong hindi naaabot na standards, it doesn't mean na unjust yung standard. So just pa rin yung person, especially if yung author- may authority siya to impose it. Yep. Yeah. Accurate. Thank you, bro. It's nice. Thank you. Meron isa pa dito pala. I, I'm, so, kay Levy. Ay, o nga pala, I forgot. Sorry, sorry. Si David, I said kanina, so I need to keep my words. So, let's get muna yung question ni David before we proceed kay Levy. Come on, David. Nasa ka ngayon? An- ano siya? Uh, been trying to ponder it through, pero I... Di ko pa alam kung paano siya simulan. But I think naging curious ako with regards to the new conversation regarding about na Calvinism is relating to Gnosticism. And so I think there are certain scholars who try to make the accusation na gumagawa ah, mayroong similarities to it with regards to secret will tapos kasama na din dyan yung ano, pagka-accuse ni pagka-accuse kay St. Augustine for reading the Greek text wrong because he wasn't um a master in reading the Greek text he was only re- he only understood it in Latin, in Latin so parang iniisip ko like is there a way to counter that are there other resources that uh, says the opposite uh understanding na no calvinism is not inherently gnostic in that sense Because I'm I'm not entirely familiar with the you know the historical development of you know Calvinism. Because uh, I've always understood that most of I think portions of the tulip are considered to be b- biblical. Um, pero I never really dived in through when it comes to the early church. So do you have any other you know brief thoughts regarding about that, Kuya Kyle? Yeah. Um. And, and I think Jared. I think Jared would be more suited to this. Pero I am aware na si no William Lane Craig o si na ano, si na Provisionist Boy. Ganun eh, Leighton Flowers, Provisionist Boy. Ano, Leighton Flowers, is bit, si Leighton Flowers yung una na gano'n, no? nag-bring up ng discussion na yan. Na, I remember Leighton Flowers said na hindi necessary in one of his videos, but I do, he didn't make the accusation right away. I think it was another author who did the uh, full on uh discourse regarding about about that i think it was augustinian calvinism ating pangalan ng ng book ken something ano ulit yung pangalan ken, ken, ken wilson dr ken wilson yeah ken, ken the wilson foundation, so, the foundation of augustinian calvinism yeah so, so parang ngayon ko lang narinig yung ganung classing discourse So I Although, don't know. Do you have any other thoughts Flower about that? There's a similarity in Calvinism with Valentinian Gnosticism, particularly when it comes to predestination. I think I, I think I kind of saw that that video then. Um, Gerard, would you like to jump at it? Familiar ka ba? Hindi, hindi ako familiar actually dun sa discussion. Yeah. Uh, you know, I think we'd have to get back to you on that. Although, if I may, um. It's kind of hard for me to actually say say na similar ang Gnosticism or even that we bear any similarity uh, with them. Um, so I think it's something that uh, we would get back to you on. But thank you for bringing that up. Because honestly, parang I treated it as a side discussion. Ah, Gerard, you know uh, about Gnosticism and Calvinism. Meron niya rason na encounter na material about it being compared or saying na Calvinism came from Gnosticism.
Ayan, so ending, tulad kami magbabasa about it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank Uh-oh. you, bro. <laughs> Ox naman. <laughs> Wala lang. Bra- brain fart lang. Now that na mentioned about Calvinism. <laughs> All right. So next yung kay Levy, yung question niya is if si God ba yung nag-ordain or predestine ng fall? Oo. Did God decree the fall? Jared, you wanna you wanna hit on that? <laughs> you kind of did, bro. You you mentioned earlier that uh something about the fall. If 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 the fall didn't happen, your glory in God in Christ wouldn't have been. I think this is um um. Parang we can we can ano eh, we can imply. Uh, pero the scripture doesn't explicitly say, no? Um, but, you know, yung typical Calvinist answer would be that yung minention mo kanina, Kyle. <clears throat> so yes, um, if we affirm that God is sovereign, definitely, pero not in the way na we we think about it. Yeah, and uh, if okay lang, uh, I guess I wanna bring this na even among Calvinists, medyo interesting na discussion yan, yung pag ni God ng Paul. Kasi there are three perspectives on that. Um, pero ako, I hold to this particular perspective. I don't know if Gerard holds that. So yes, uh, absolutely. So I believe na God decreed the election of some and the condemnation of others. I also believe na God decreed to create those that are elected and also he still decreed to create those who will be eternally condemned. I believe that God decreed to permit the fall, okay? And yet, I also believe that God decreed to provide salvation for the elect through Jesus Christ. So, um, th- this is actually called superlapsarianism. Pero, uh, yeah, um, God decreed the fall in order so that yung yung covenant ng Trinity that the Father would give the Son a people for His own and that the Son would be sung of for ages as the Redeemer. That was the reason why God decreed the fall so that His His glory would be seen both in creation and redemption. And and uh, I just want to say up front then, no? na, if the next question is, then why did God do it like that? I don't know. But one thing I know is that the history that we will be singing of in heaven one day will be richer and far more beautiful because God decreed the fall. And let's uh, show our appreciation for it, Kyle. Thank you, Kyle. So I think that's the last question. So if ever... My further questions, kayo, it's up to you. No? Well, pwede niyo naman i-contact si Kyle or si Jared when it comes to Calvinism kasi mas expert sila doon. And it's something that you can search din. So yung mga ano, so go, I'll give resources lang if interested kayo to know more about Calvinism. So yung ministries that have that specific view is yung Ligonier Ministries and kay R.C. Sproul. Yung Desiring God, yung kay John Piper. Ayan. Meron pa ba kayong ibang ma-recommend? Diguni. Uh, kung gusto na ng primer, uh, available sa desiringgod.org yung Five Points of Grace ni John Piper. 70 pages lang sa. It's a short read. you love it. Um, and also, mayroon akong uh, movie na kung hindi ka mabasa, gusto manood. Ang pangalan niya, yeah. The Calvinist. So, chat me, saan kasi yung OneDrive link. You can watch it at your own time. Hindi siya pirata, okay? Hindi siya pirata. <laughs> <laughs> Same yun sa gumawa ng American Gospel, right? Yung Calvinist mm-hmm. movie. Okay. So, pwede niyo rin siya panoorin to learn more about yung May pinapasabi din pala si Adnel. <laughs> so, sabi niya, kasi diba, yung The American Gospel and yung The Calvinist, maganda na panoorin yun together. Particularly because 
a lot of people na nanonood lang ng The American Gospel in our experience and hindi po ba si Sham? Sham, familiar ka ba sa The American Gospel na ano? Yeah. Na movie? Okay, madami na din nanonood ng The American Gospel tapos mga nagsiwalaan. As in, hindi na, nagsiwalaan na lumipat ha? as in nagwala, nangaaway ng people. Pero when you watch The Calvinist, I just want to quote what, uh, what, what the ender of that movie is. Um, Calvinism is a diamond in a context. And, and the context of, of that is the church. And so Calvinism, when properly seen, should be a force for good for the church and not for its destruction. So, yeah. Uh, kung manonood kayo ng, ng uh, This American Gospel, i-chat nyo na din ako. Nood kayo ng The Calvinist. I think The Calvinist has done more good <laughs> than uh, The American Gospel. Hello. Hello.